In our lives, all of us would have struggled with prayer. We are told by our spiritual guides to always be persistent in prayer, good works and always try to maintain spiritual discipline. We are invited to be strong in our faith to overcome obstacles like self-centeredness, consumerism, false expectations and hopes that mislead us. Keeping our eyes on Jesus, can we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives to bear fruit and bring healing to others? Our entrance hymn, Sing to the Mountains. Sing to the mountains, sing to the sea. Raise your voices, lift your heart. This is the day the Lord has made. Let all the earth rejoice. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice. He has done. this mass we shall be praying for all your personal intentions it is the 20th Sunday in ordinary time in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and, and with, with your spirit. spirit my dear brothers and sisters let us first acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Glorify God together. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great. Jesus Christ. 
Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Have a care for justice, act with integrity, for soon my salvation will come and my integrity be manifest. Foreigners who have attached themselves to the Lord serve him, and to love his name and be his servant, all who observe the Sabbath, not profaning it and clinging to my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain. I will make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their holocaust and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house will be called a house of prayer for all the peoples. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our responses, let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. All together. Let the peoples praise you, O God. And bless us, and let your face shed its light upon us. So will your ways be known upon the earth, and all nations learn your saving hand. Let the peoples praise you, O Lord. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God still give us his blessings till the ends of the earth revere him. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Let me tell you pagans this. I have been sent to the pagans as their apostle and I am proud of being sent. But the purpose of it is to make my own people envious of you and in this way save some of them. Since their re rejection meant the reconciliation of the world, do you know what their admission will mean? Nothing less than a resurrection from the dead. God never takes back his gifts or revokes his choice. Just as you changed from being disobedient to God and now enjoy mercy because of their disobedience, so those who are disobedient now and only because of the mercy shown to you will also enjoy mercy eventually. God has imprisoned all men in their own disobedience only to show mercy to all mankind. 
the word of the lord thanks be to god lord. The sheep that belong to me listen to my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus left Genesaret and withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And then out came a Canaanite woman from that district and started shouting, Sir, son of David, take pity on me. My daughter is tormented by a devil. But he answered her, not a word and his disciples went and pleaded with him give her what she wants they said because she's shouting after us and he said in reply I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel but the woman had come up and was kneeling at his feet Lord she said help me and he replied it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the house dogs and she retorted Ah, yes, sir, but even house dogs can eat the scraps that fall from the master's table. And then Jesus answered her, Woman, you have great faith. Let your wish be granted. And from that moment, her daughter was well again. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, I'd like to start today's reflection with three life episodes. The first of a friend of mine that I've known for years together and how she has almost gone to the brink of just giving up everything in life. It's been more than 25 years that she's been fighting a court case. In and out of court, in and out of court, so often and there was a point of time where she was looking so haggard, completely depressed and frustrated. She was a daily mass goer. And she reached this point of time where she just couldn't take it any longer. And she kept telling me, Father, why is God doing this to me? Why is he turning a deaf ear towards me? Why is he not listening to my plea? And there was a point when she just stopped coming for mass. And then I sent for her. And she says, Father, I've given up. I've just given up. I don't think God loves me anymore. He refuses to listen to my prayer. Eventually, she started coming back for mass. But the court case is not over. She continues to run in and out of court. Take a second episode. Another friend of mine who once shared with me how for years She's been praying and praying and praying for a conversion to happen as far as her son is concerned. Her son has stopped coming from us. Her son has moved on to drugs, alcohol, smoking, bad company. She keeps sharing with me how the house has become like a hostel just for the night. No sign of him right through the day. And she says, Father, I've been praying and praying and praying. He's becoming more and more abusive. He's not listening to anyone. He's begun to steal from the house because he needs the cash to buy his stuff. He's getting violent. He's raising his hand on me and his father. He's ill-treating his siblings. How much longer can I take it? And here's another instance of a woman who feels that God is not listening to her prayer. 
She said, I've been doing every possible Naveena. I've been running from one shrine to another. I've been going for daily mass. I've been spending a lot of time in personal prayer. But why is God not listening to me? No sign of that case being resolved till today. And take a third example. Again, a family that I'm close to. In a gap of 18 months, lost three members of that family. One was in the seminary to be a priest. Three, 18 months, three deaths in that family. And eventually now, the mother is left all alone because the last son of hers also passed away some years ago. And I would visit that house regularly, trying to comfort this lady, trying to console her. But one interesting thing about this woman is not once did she ever ask me, why has God done this to me? She just accepted God's plan for her in her life. And she kept praying. And that was something beautiful about her. She kept going for Mass every day in spite of tragedy after tragedy. And she felt my greatest consolation was in prayer. I've never asked God for anything she told me. The only thing I told God was, keep me happy. This is your plan. Give me the grace and the strength to accept your will. Three real life situations, my dear brothers and sisters. And if I can add a fourth one to today's reflection, it's the gospel we heard of the Canaanite woman. Again, a real life situation, maybe not from my life, but from the lifetime of Jesus. Here is a Canaanite woman, not a Jew, coming to Jesus, already taboo. Non-Jews, women, not allowed to approach Jesus. But yet she was not afraid. She came with a request not for herself, but she came with a request for her daughter, for someone else. And look at this. On the first instance of her request, no response from Jesus. How harsh could he be? Here was a man who spoke about love, who spoke about relationships. Here was a man who healed so many. Here was a man who preached so much about goodness and just ignoring this woman. She didn't stop there. The disciples went to Jesus, do something because she's just harassing us. And that's when Jesus said, again, I've not come for these people. I've come for the lost sheep of Israel, namely the Jews, the Israelites. So once again, a second refusal to do anything to a request that has come to him. And then finally, she makes another request. Again, persisting on her request, my daughter has been tormented by the demon. Only you can make her well again. And then once again, a third kind of a rebuke from Jesus. Where he says, speaks about, I've not come for the dogs because these foreigners were referred to as dogs. And yet she goes on to say, at least you can give me the scraps that fall from the master's table. The dogs will eat the scraps. And that is what Jesus wanted to watch. He wanted to demonstrate for everyone around him, this is faith. This is the power of prayer. This is being persistent. Now, the question we can ask ourselves today is, was Jesus testing this woman? And I'd like to say no, even though a few biblical scholars would say yes. I'd like to say no, because I do not believe that Jesus tests us. This was a self-test of the Canaanite woman. It's a self-test that we inflict on ourselves. Am I willing to go the extra mile? Am I willing not to give up? Am I willing to be persistent as far as my prayer is concerned? Knowing that God will respond one way or the other. And therefore God never tests us, my dear brothers and sisters. I just believe it's a self-test. Now where is the problem with most of us? The problem is this. We are living in what I call an instant world. So you've got instant messaging today, you've got instant coffee, you've got instant noodles, everything is jutput and therefore we expect an instant response to our prayer 
when we're making a request to God. And I think God doesn't work that way. We sing this lovely hymn so often, in his time he makes all things beautiful. And therefore we have to be able to fit in with God's timetable and his plan for us. Don't be disappointed, my dear brothers and sisters, if your prayer request has gone unanswered. I believe one way or the other, God answers all our prayers. I'm convinced about this and I can testify about it. Maybe he won't answer it the way we want it to be, but he will certainly answer it. Five very little known but powerful lessons from the faith of this Canaanite woman. First of all, our prayer should always include other people. How often are we just praying for ourselves? God, I want this. Allow this to happen to me. I need this today. I want this. Can you answer my prayer? Can we now shift and can we start focusing on others? Was two days ago in the newspaper, there was a nice article about one of our priests in our Archdiocese of Bombay who has begun this prayer mission where he invites people between a certain time and a certain time of the day to do a WhatsApp video call. And there are prayer warriors who are praying with these people. How interesting. What a fabulous idea. And most of these prayers, my dear brothers and sisters, which I receive so many during the day, so many prayer requests, and I'm so happy. A lot of people have been asking me, Father, can you pray for X, Y, or Z? Because this person has either got COVID or is suffering from a terminal ill disease or has met with an accident or something or the other. I hardly get any people ask me, can you please pray for me, Father? Which is a very good sign that we are constantly including others in our prayer. That's the first lesson we learned from the Canaanite woman. The prayer request was not about herself, it was about her daughter. Second, our prayer should be habitual, not a one-time event. We can read in today's gospel, Jesus answered her not a word. How difficult it could be for that woman to accept that her only hope of healing is now beginning to fade away. And to make things worse, the disciples urged Jesus to send her away. But Jesus further told the woman that he was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. And that could be heartbreaking for anyone, my dear brothers and sisters. But the Canaanite woman persists in her requests. She did not waver. She did not lose heart. She could have easily considered Jesus as a cold and heartless teacher by the way Jesus had treated her. But we can see the persistent prayer of the Canaanite woman. Instead of turning away, she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. And this is the kind of attitude God is looking for when we pray. Our prayer should be habitual, not just a one-time event. The third lesson. God puts more importance on building our character. Sometimes God does not immediately answer our prayers. There are times that things get worse, much worse than they were before. Our time frame seems not to coincide with God's timetable. However, just like the Canaanite woman's story, we can always be assured that all things work together for good to those who really love God. So when God doesn't seem to be answering our prayer, instead of doubting him, we need to ask ourselves, what can we learn from this experience? In every situation, it is certain that God is teaching us a lesson. The lesson that the Canaanite woman learned in today's gospel is keep asking. Don't stop. You're asking for the right thing. Keep asking. And God, one way or the other, will answer. The fourth lesson Problems should lead us towards God, not away from Him. So even though we feel that God is not really responding to us, He's not answering our prayers. We're running to court for so many years. I've been praying for years and years for the conversion of my son. I've been praying for a job. I've been praying for success in examinations. It's not happening. Stop running away from God. It's all the more reason for us to keep coming even closer to Him. One of the reasons people leave the church is that they can't handle 
the trials and difficulties associated with the Christian path that we are to follow. We must all count it with joy when we fall into various trials because we share these trials with the Lord. And the fifth and final lesson we can learn today. Our reward is at the end of the journey, not at the beginning. Take an athlete who's doing a 100 meter dash. The reward is not at the starting line. That's important how you begin. The reward is at the finish line. Because of the strong faith and persistence of the Canaanite woman, she was praised by Jesus. Her daughter was immediately healed at that very moment in verse 28. If the Canaanite woman expected the reward at the very beginning, she should not have continued anymore. So we must realize, my dear brothers and sisters, that we bring about the self-test in our lives. But we will receive our reward. Though it is true that our Christian walk can be difficult at times, we must always remember when all things are said and done, it will always be worth it. I believe there are three ways that God answers our prayers. First, he will say yes to what we are asking for. Second, he will say no because he wants to give you something better. Or third, he will say wait a while because I want to give you the best. We profess our faith using the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father for all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial of the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was in front of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Having persistence in prayer and faith, let us confidently bring our prayers to the Lord. Our response is, Loving Father, hear our prayer altogether. Loving, Loving Father, hear our prayer. We pray for all the members of the church that we may grow in faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving, Loving Father, hear our prayer. We pray for all the people in the world that guided by the Spirit, we may share the earth's resources with all in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving, Loving Father, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have lost hope that we may keep our focus on Jesus and be persevering in prayer. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving, Loving Father, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those baptized, that we may place our complete trust in Jesus, who is the source of all healing and life. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving, Loving Father, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for our personal and local needs. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving, Loving Father, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you desire that all people be saved through the redemptive work of your Son, Jesus. Hear our prayers, that we may grow in faith as communities of love that welcome all in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I offer to him, we offer you. We offer you, O oh Lord divine, a humble 
gifts of bread and wine, we place them on your altar, Lord, today. Make them worthy of your love, send your blessings from above, sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray. My dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we do give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Oswald our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An Act of Spiritual Communion O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul to enrich me with your holy grace 
and make me truly your own forever o jesus living in mary come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness in the fullness of your power in the communion of your mysteries in the perfection of your ways o divine guest give to my soul a strong lively faith an unbounded trust perfect humility an abiding sorrow for my sins a total abandonment to your divine will and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart o sacrament most holy o sacrament divine all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine lord jesus thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion A communion hymn, The Lord is Near. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, Hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. spirit. And may the peace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. I recession in him, O oh, give thanks to the Lord. O oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. O oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Yes, 
faithful.